Once again, the eyes of the world will be on Liverpool. Simon Hoban. It's going to be great, isn't it? Radio Merseyside. And now we're going to talk about education. And Steamco are here over the weekend to give a series of talks all about it. I got a word with Nick Colston, who's from Steamco. He explained a bit more. I came up to Liverpool and jumped in a cab and there was a Portuguese taxi driver. And I said, how long have you been here? And he said, oh, 18 years. I said, do you like it? He said, I love it. It's the people. And I thought, well, where else for the launch of Steamco? Steamco is about bringing the community into primary schools. It's that community of artists, parents, teachers, businesses. Downstairs, while you've been sitting here listening to this, we've had about 60 people working with children from local primary schools, running activities, inspiring them with what we call STEAM skills. It's that science, technology, engineering, art, and maths. Today we've had classes in from uh, year two, year three. We've been doing some coding with them with uh, one of our websites that we use is code.org. We've been doing some scratch-based activities. The kids have been programming with Frozen and Angry Birds and things like that. It's stuff that they can do at home as well, which is always a bonus. One of the big reasons for being here today was this chapter, Ken Robinson. Thanks for sending me a copy of the book. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the book? There's a lot to say about practically what has to happen in education to bring about the sorts of changes that many of us think are important. That's what this book's about. It's arguing for radical change, but also showing how it happens and not just how it could happen, but how it is happening. I went into education because teachers saved my life. And I discovered that when you're teaching, it is the best job in the world, literally. But what I want to see for the children in my class and my own kids is that they have an exploratory nature, that they ask questions, that they look excited about stuff. They want to know things. It's about being exposed to opportunities that will enable you to perhaps not get the right answer the first time, perhaps struggle, things like your projects, things like the opportunities to listen to people who will inspire you and engage you with what could be possible in the future. That's what we're all about. We still see it as our mission as enriching society through ideas and action. So applying that knowledge in powerful ways to make a difference to some of today's most challenging problems. Creativity, it isn't just about the individual. Our lives are only possible because of those around us. And so it's not just people who can be creative. It's organisations, it's places, it's societies. Some of the best scientists that we actually have are sitting in our classrooms, in science classrooms, bored to tears, completely alienated from an education system that doesn't actually value them, doesn't give them the identity uh, that they want. What we've become really good at doing here at the studio is, um, is recruiting those students that in the previous schools they were the geek in the room and sometimes they felt quite isolated but they come here and they really do find um, a small uh, community of very like-minded students and teachers. Art makes us think about things a little bit differently than the norm and I really think that this is a key part in creativity and science. We believe in the genius in everyone in everyone an artist and everyone a scientist and that arts and sciences can change the world for the better. We use uh, arts and artistic um, activities to promote the idea of thinking differently and we believe very strongly that when we give children opportunities to take part in those kinds of activities it opens their mind to possibilities. Reading of your own free will, of, on your own time, when nobody's told you to, helps build cognitive development. That's to say, your brain works better if you read for pleasure. We develop robots for kids uh, to try and get them involved in uh, programming and coding. It's not about just saying, here's a scratch cat, watch it dance. It's saying, how do you feel when you use this tech? How do you feel it could help you learn about programming as an idea? We have a new computing curriculum now in the UK since September 2014. And it's causing lots of problems for teachers because it's now saying to teachers, you have to teach them how to program. And the teachers are going, but I don't feel confident myself. We have kids, communities, uh, mums, dads, sons, daughters with raspberry pies and old laptops and all sorts of stuff. So our brain, when you think it's not doing stuff, it's actually thinking of crazy ideas. And this is where I come in. So we create 
businesses on the back of ideas. If I knew where ideas came from, I'd go there more often. I like to go to my studio and just sit in the tree and think of ideas. Jaffa Cakes asked me to be creative with Jaffa Cakes and, and so I decided to nibble Jaffa Cakes in the form of uh, British uh, landmarks or iconic things. I thought about driverless cars and how they are, they're an inevitable uh, part of the future. So I, I decided to make a, a stained glass driverless sleeper car. It's currently on display at the uh, Design Museum in London. And yesterday I was talking to the children about it and they were very enthusiastic. People may judge them to be precocious, even disruptive, but you're not trying to raise a well-behaved child. You're raising independent and interested adults. We wanted to make science interesting, but, and I think that's by making it real and relevant. And we wanted to capture people's imaginations. We wanted people to think about science creatively. And we wanted to square any circles, any of these stereotypes, we wanted to bash them down. The question isn't, do we have the technology? We do. Do we have the intellectual capital? We do. The question is, do we have the moral will? And are we actually raising a generation of children that will use their creativity and their intellect to redistribute those inequalities of wealth? This is How to Be More Awesome. It's not an application, it's a tactile book. It was co-designed and co-created here in the studio school. One of the things that I am particularly passionate about is breaking down those barriers between secondary schools. I've always thought that secondary schools are wrong and we do it wrong and if we could knock them all down tomorrow and open them up on the primary model it would be far more effective. The future, as someone said, is already here. It's just unevenly distributed. And if your child happens to go to a historical school rather than a future school, then that's unfair regardless of whether they're going to be a gardener or a carer or a lawyer or a medic, isn't it? Boris Johnson, Mayor of London, uh, had a conference and an aspect of that Boris was talking about the money invested in STEM. And this chap, Robert Winston, banged his fist on the table and he said, you've got to get them in primary. But primary teachers are flat out teaching children to read, write and do maths. They haven't got time to teach in coding, being experts on creativity and experts in science and invention. So what we do is we bring the community into primary schools to work with primary school teachers to inspire children with creativity. Steamco was founded around that thinking, building on some of this thinking and some of the educational stuff that Guy Claxton talks about in terms of creative thinking and doing, stretching those activities, getting children to think of their brain as a muscle that needs exercising. As this front page of Wired says here, powering art meets science events in UK schools. We give them a day of creative thinking and doing activities across the STEAM skills. 20 activities the children can, can pick and choose from. For example, in one year, we taught every child in the school to code a Raspberry Pi computer to make a Lego Robo crocodile bite their finger. Every child in that school, over 200 children aged 5 to 11, coded a Raspberry Pi to make that bite their finger. That went in Wired magazine. The BBC filmed a documentary about us on it. We went in Al Jazeera Global News Bulletins. We've been on the front page of Brazilian newspapers. We've been to the Raspberry Pi factory. We run a code club. Paper rockets out of pieces of A4. We were doing those yesterday in the sports hall. We were rolling up pieces of A4 and firing them with 200 pounds per square inch across the sports hall. That will go a five-story building, that rocket. Just a piece of A4 paper. So what we want to do is get these famous people to work with Steamco to go into primary schools to inspire children with creativity. But not on a token gesture basis where somebody goes in once and cuts a ribbon and talks to the children and that's great, they've got a photo in the paper, but to do it in a way that has lasting impact and can scale and be amplified. His creativity, his STEAM skills, his application of science, technology, think about an iPhone design, engineering, art and maths, are fueling the most successful business there's ever been in the history of commerce. Unbelievable. This is the Eco Car Activity, one of 20 activities on a Steam Co Day. What's significant about this picture? It's the year one classroom. That's Mr. Harding, the year six teacher. That's a year four boy, I believe. A reception dad, a year six and a year two dad, a chap from Ford, I think, that's a, I think that's a year one dad and two year three girls. That car was raced at Goodwood later on in the year. 
That for me is community collaboration in a nutshell. Themeco at St Saviour's School has been shortlisted for an award by the, with the TES for community and collaboration. We're looking for funding to, to build a framework, to build a structure so we can roll this out so that every school in the UK can do what we've done really easily, so that parents can get involved, so that businesses can get involved. Do we want to inspire people to go out and do this and, and get people to think, I can run a Steam Co Day, I can make this a project that I can get involved with. What separates two people is how they think. How many people have you heard that have said, I should be starting a project. I should be scoring more goals. I should be doing this. But I don't think deciding is enough. Deciding isn't enough. Because people make lots of decisions, but they don't do. This was the book that Nick was inspired by. Seth Godin's latest book. Art is what we call it when someone does something that might connect us to someone else. It might not work, but here's the thing. The guy who invented the ship also invented the shipwreck. And either you're in or you're out. Either you want to play this game or you don't. Art doesn't work because we did something conventional and predictable and here it is industrialized, right? Art works because we connected. The question is simple. Are you going to matter? I hope you will. It was really, really interesting. And I think the children felt really um, quite inspired by it. Seeing the students in the lab so inspired with things such as Gilson Papats and looking at the science behind colour across the different disciplines of chemistry and biology and physics was just brilliant to see them so engaged with something like that. I thought it was great, yeah. I thought it worked really, really well. Um, no, I thought they really enjoyed some of the different oh activities God. and trying different things. Would you like to have one of those in your school? Yes. Who'd like to have a day like that in your own school? I think we're on the edge of scaling up a real transformation in the root purpose of what goes on in our schools and it has to happen, it's just a matter of when and I think what we're doing here today is going to make that when come sooner rather than later. What do you think of the STEM versus STEAM debate? I absolutely commend every attempt to broaden the curriculum and I think STEAM Co that's all that put together this event is doing fantastic work. It's putting the A back in, which is for the arts. Um, I think that's really important. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.